Dear brothers and sisters, there's probably been no time in our history, in our own history as individuals, where we had the opportunity to create our own social circles, to create our own methods and proportions of consumption, what we choose to bring into our lives, what we choose to read, who we choose to interact with outside of the necessary work and family spaces. It's an interesting time and subhanAllah, we spoke last week about the collective character and the collective decay of that character. And there's no doubt that part of that overall nastiness is the political atmosphere, but a pandemic that puts people for the most part in their homes and in front of their screens all the time when we were already suffering from a social media addiction and from an addiction to our screens makes things even uh, more compelling in regards to what we choose to put ourselves into and what we choose to put into our hearts and our minds and things of that sort. And there was a saying that I really loved a long time ago. And let me just say from now, it's not a hadith. It's not a saying of a Sahabi. I think it's a saying of Socrates or some philosopher where he said that great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, small minds discuss people. Great minds discuss ideas, average minds discuss events, small minds discuss people. Now obviously, from our perspective as Muslims, discussing the Prophet ﷺ and discussing the companions and discussing the Salaf, the pious predecessors, in a way of learning from them and drawing inspiration from them is one of the greatest forms of ibadah, one of the greatest forms of worship. But this idea is the discussion of people in regards to gossip and in regards to the things that do not concern us. And we know all of the ahadith and all of the different things that warn us about engaging ourselves in or indulging that which does not concern us. The ahadith in that regard are many from the goodness of a person's Islam, tarkuhu ma la ya'ni, that a person leaves off that which doesn't concern them. The ahadith about the silence and the, the, you know, the, the safety that comes with being silent. But subhanAllah, I just came across the statement from Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala. And honestly, this statement could circulate in our heads and could give us a lot to contemplate upon. And I want us to just think about this, inshallah ta'ala, the context of him weighing in on this statement or giving his opinion. Before I even talk about the statement, you know, the most offensive sins to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, as some of the scholars of Tazkiyah have mentioned, are the ones that are unnecessary and the ones that are sought out. You know, there's a difference between you get caught in a situation and you commit a sin, or you have serious conditions that cause you to fall in a moment of weakness or you fall prey to your desires. But people that will actively go out looking for sins and actively publicize sins and actively, it becomes offensive because that shows a disregard for the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and that you completely take the idea of muhaqqarat al the belittling of sins, you know, you don't take it seriously at all. It's whatever at this point, right? Just go look for it, looking for filth and jumping in and getting more and more. And jahr is not that you um, are seen in public committing a sin, it's that you publicize a sin proudly, right? It's to that point where it's just offensive, foul in that nature, right? That you have no consideration for the gravity of the sin anymore. And on the other side of that is when something comes your way, right? Now, when it comes to the discussions and when it comes to things that show up in our WhatsApp and show up in our social media feed and start to become discussions, then there are certain people that are naturally going to be looked to, to be asked about certain things that are happening. And you know, in the case of Umar ibn Abdul Aziz rahimahullah ta'ala, he was being asked about some of the fitan, some of the trials and tribulations that took place with the Sahaba before him. And he is not too disconnected from their context. And he is not a person who gossips, not a person who's going to show any disregard to the honor of the companions of the Prophet SallAllahu Alaihi Wasallam or anything of that sort. And there is no one that fears Allah Subh'anaHu Wa Taala more than him. No one's going to show more God consciousness in the way that they speak, in the delicacy and the sensitivity of a matter than someone like Umar ibn Abdul Aziz Rahimahullah Ta'ala. He's not that far disconnected in terms of time. He's still living some of the effects of some of those, those wars and tribulations and trials that took place. Some of these are his grandparents, his uncles. But SubhanAllah, the profound wisdom in how he responded when he was asked for his commentary, asked to weigh in, and who would be more qualified to weigh in than him? He said, first of all, that is blood that Allah caused me to have no hand in shedding. Alhamdulillah, my hand was not involved in any of that conflict. 
That is blood that Allah held my hand back or caused me to have no hand in shedding. He said, وَأَنَا أَكْرَهُ أَنْ أَغْمِ سَرِسَانِي فِيهَا And I would hate to dip my tongue in it. I thought, subhanAllah, how beautiful of a way to express, not interested. <laughs> how beautiful of a way to express, not interested. That is blood I had nothing to do with shedding and why would I go and dip my tongue in it now? And it speaks to that idea of what we learn from the Prophet and the companions in the analogies. Some of these things that waste our time and potentially sink our akhirah on the Day of Judgment. And I was thinking about that saying of Amr ibn As anhu, walking with some of his companions and he sees a dead mule and he points to it and he says, for you to eat that full thing. You know, imagine passing by a dead mule and it's covered in flies and nastiness. And he says, for you to eat that full thing is better than consuming the meat of your brother. And there's one thing to say about the meat and what the rotten meat represents. Would one of you like to consume the flesh of your brother, your dead brother? That's one thing. But the second thing is what is the content of those that are flocking towards the meat? Why be a fly? Why be a fly in the first place? When we seek to be people of substance in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. The Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa when he was talking about the people that are furthest from him on the day of judgment, most hated to him on the day of judgment, the first person he mentioned was a tharfarun. It's a category of people. A tharfarun are people that talk too much. Too many hot takes. Why did they weigh in? What even brought you to this discussion? Were you even compelled? Did you really have to weigh in? Did you really have to give an opinion? Did you really have to comment on it? Why? Allah Azza wa Jal spared you from it. Why did you then go jump into it? It doesn't involve you. Why did you involve yourself? But that's the reality. Is it's not just about the substance of the things that we're flocking to. It's about our substance when we find ourselves looking for these things and then pouncing on these things. Now subhanAllah, we find in the Qur'an, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَمَا يَذَّكَّرُ إِلَّا أُولُو الْأَلْبَابِ That the only people that are capable of reflection and really benefiting from the Qur'an, really benefiting from deep moments of tadabbur and introspection are ulul alba, people of pure thought, people of pure thought. Every sin is a distraction from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And there is a direct connection between the way that rotten meat attracts flies and the hidden pearls that are ready to be extracted from the Qur'an and ready to be extracted from the sunnah and from the seerah through a deep reading. When you're reading through it, and you're finding things because you're paying attention. I want you to think to yourself, the difference between reading the Qur'an on your phone with your notifications on and reading the Qur'an without anything around you and without looking at anything else. You could do a whole khatam of the Qur'an, but you've got it on your phone and you've got your notifications on and your messages are popping up and you're getting pulled into this and then you'll pull back in and not extract anything new. Why is it that Imam al-Shafi'i rahimahullah said that every time I read the Qur'an, I found something new in it that I did not find the time before. A man who would frequently finish the entirety of the recitation of the Qur'an. Because he was paying close attention, searching, looking between the lines, reading into the ayat. Not to make up tafasir, but because the Qur'an is full of infinite reflection for us. To extract and to extract and to extract, to dive deep, 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 deep. And so a person should think to themselves, what do I dive deep into? What do I really get in between? And what does that say about the content of my heart and the content of my character? Especially in a time when we're creating our world in such a virtual way, subhanAllah. We've talked about the importance of the Qur'an, the Qur'an, the Qur'an. Your daily recitation of the Qur'an. Where is it? How much Qur'an are you reciting every day? It's not enough to recite it once a week. Your daily recitation of the Qur'an every single day, even if it's a page, with tadabbur and tafakkur, with reflection, dive as deep as you can into it and ignore as much of what Allah has spared you from. You know, subhanAllah, the reason why gossip is so juicy is because every weigh-in is suddenly given weight, even if the one that's weighing in has no authority whatsoever, just because there's a weigh-in. Again, flies, weigh-in, weigh-in, weigh-in. You're not interested in the weight of the person, you're interested in the gossip, interested in these types of things. And then we hear all of these ahadith about the dangers 
the dangers of ghiba, the dangers of namima, the dangers of slander. And how sad is it, subhanAllah, on the day of judgment that a person finds that what prevented them from Jannah was a tweet or a WhatsApp message. May Allah protect us. A tweet or a WhatsApp message stops you from going to Jannah. Why? Because the Prophet ﷺ said, لا يدخل الجنة النمام. A person of namima will not enter into Jannah. May Allah protect us from harming with our tongues. May Allah protect us from occupying our hearts and our minds with things that are of no benefit and not pleasing to Him. And may Allah allow us to dive deep into the Qur'an and into the seerah of the Prophet ﷺ and his companions and to learn things about ourselves in these moments of social isolation that we did not know before and to grow closer to Him in a way that we may not have been before. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us to be in a constant state of seeking Him with our thoughts, seeking Him with our words, seeking Him with our deeds, seeking Him with our hearts subhanahu wa ta'ala. Allahumma ameen. Assalamu alaikum Islam Box family. As you guys know, our channel has been demonetized by YouTube recently. We need your support more than ever. Your support can help us continue to educate and motivate people to make and publish videos daily. Jazakallah.